Good morning guys on day 13 on the Camino. Today we start climbing and the climb starts right here. As you can see we're at 157 meters of elevation and we're gonna climb about a thousand meters or even a little bit more. Woke up this morning at 5 30 and I just had breakfast at the bakery and the cafe that were just facing each other and what can I say, it's supposed to start a new stage right now, it's gonna be even more beautiful than in days past, and I cannot wait to get it started. Let's go. Six, 27 kilometers it's gonna be a long day man it's gonna be like day one here on this Camino ready made it up here to this uh, chapel overlooking the town down below I can see the Sun cracking over the horizon I, I don't know if those are the clouds probably the clouds because the mountains are a little bit down below yes no support on today's stage almost all the way to the end when I say no support, it's like bars and restaurants and such. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of water sources. So I bought a sandwich at the Boulangerie this morning. I bought a couple of uh, uh, pan au chocolate and a cafe across the street just to have a breakfast. The guy, the, the guy from Romania left this morning just a couple of minutes before me. I had the entire dorm all to myself and it was hot last night, man. I went to sleep like at 10 kind of like sweating after taking two showers and then woke up like at three in the morning, just a little bit chilly. I had the window open, that's usually what happens out here. And I just got in my little liner because I didn't bring a sleeping bag. That was more than enough. And uh, I don't know, today I'm staying at another place where the guy, the guy that runs the place speaks Spanish. So it's been great not having that language barrier over the last uh, couple of days. There's the sun, let's continue. Well, we've been climbing. We're back in the vineyards with the grapes and also the apple archers here. And as you can tell, the signs are starting to change. The GR65 sign is more prominent now. We have the next town, the kilometers in green here. We're at 294 feet of elevation. And from now on out, it's gonna be a mental game. I've been walking for 25 days already. And the first 12, it was in the Tour de Mont Blanc, which the terrain was way more difficult. But you know, you, the body starts to get tired after walking for so long with only, what was it, two rest days in between the two trips. Landscape is starting to change. It was kind of uh, flat and boring during that middle section. As I mentioned before, I was watching like The Walking Dead. Didn't feel like a zombie, but I felt like I survived a, an apocalyptic event and I was all on my own out in the countryside with very few people uh, in between the towns. Supposed to change now, four days away from Le Puy and Valais. Let's just get there ready. So seven and a half kilometers down, made it to the first uh, town along the way with uh, no water sources until I got to this uh, church with a toilet, public toilet, that usually they have a water tap in there where you can uh, refill your, your bottles. Incredible mural there just to welcome me into town and I'm gonna check the church and see if they have a stamp. Will they have it? I don't know, we'll see. Yes, there was a stamp at the church, but not the one that you kind of expect 
on the pilgrimage you were usually used to the stamps with the ink here they're starting to give out like just cutouts of the stamps which i don't know what i'm supposed to do because i don't have glue to glue it to my credential after that it's just been uh, just going up and down slowly through small villages villages with uh, stone houses very little water along the way and then the final or the highest climb of the day which uh, was it was brutal it is starting to warm up and I just got here to this uh, jeet the top which is uh, right at the top strategically placed at the 100 stone marker which is right here behind me 100 kilometers to Le Pew and Valais and 1600 to Santiago so this will be the last stretch to uh, Le Pew, kind of like when you just walk from Sarria to Santiago. So quick stop at the top of that mountain where there was a Jeet Comunal. I met the Iranian uh, pilgrim from Northern France once again. Also the guy that runs it, the Jeet is closed right now because the guy has like a broken arm. So he gave me some cold water. We got sat there and talked a little bit. He told me the story about the stone marker, the 100 kilometer stone marker that was handmade by a pilgrim in his 80s that used to do this Camino all the way to Santiago a bunch of times. And the special thing about that stone marker is that all the numbers are so nice. You're 100 kilometers from Le Pew and Valais, 250 from Geneva, and 1,600 from uh, Santiago de Compostela. On my way down to the town, I had my uh, sandwich for lunch as I was walking through that nice forest. And uh, that town is where I was supposed to stay today if I were to follow uh, the stages on the guidebooks. But instead, I just went really quickly to the church looking for a stamp. There was no, su no such thing. And then I went across the street to an open bar where I had a beer and a coffee, an espresso. The funny story is that the bartender was so wasted drinking like yellow shots that it took him a few seconds just to tell me how much my bill was. All the other people that were there, the patrons were just cracking up. Uh, from there, second climb of the day and final one. Not too bad, about 150 meters. Right now I'm here at the top, uh, very close to the pass, and like five kilometers away from uh, the town where I'm supposed to be staying. I continue on five kilometers just so that tomorrow I can do the rest of the stage and another one. So tomorrow is going to be a 32 kilometer day, the longest day by far, and I think it's probably going to be a little bit longer. Very cloudy right now, I can see the dark clouds coming. So chances are that it's going to rain in the afternoon and I may not get a chance to do laundry today. Three more days to Le Pew and Valais. I better find the laundry mat somewhere because after that I have to go to Barcelona to meet some friends from the Camino del Norte where I'm going to be spending a couple of days and then I fly back to Paris, another couple of days there and then I fly back to Miami. Very busy week ahead. <laughs> Well, 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 made it to town at 3 p.m., which is the name of the town. Google, give me a help here. Bourg Argenté. Yes, hard to pronounce for me. Uh, when I got here, it was like 90 degrees and uh, had a little trouble finding the place, but I made a call, and the guy that runs the place, uh, he speaks uh, Portuñol, which is a mixture of Portuguese and Espanol. He's from Portugal, and uh, he... You know, he showed up like 10 minutes later and then I went in, took my shower because I was just sweating and completely covered in dirt from all the dust. And as soon as I got out, it was completely overcast. And as you can tell right now, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining just a little bit. I had enough time to go to the supermarket that's not far away from here just to get a couple of uh, cold drinks. And I'm even debating whether to go now to the restaurant that's about a... It's about a hundred or two hundred uh, meters away just to get a pizza because 
it's three o'clock right now look how things are and around five is when it's no around six or seven is when it's supposed to be raining full out so i won't have time uh to go and and have dinner because the restaurant closes at eight so the plan is to go right now maybe take my poncho take the umbrella and uh you know just get a pizza get something that i could just carry with me and not have to worry about it this was the hardest place for me to book when I was getting ready for the trip because uh, as it turns out, either today or this week, there's a martial arts uh, convention taking place here, which is kind of weird, but it's happening. And all the hotels in town were fully booked. This place where I'm staying is only for pilgrims, so I got very lucky. I'm the only one staying here today in the room with four beds. So, you know, what can I say? Let's just head out right now really quickly to the restaurant before the rain catches me. I won't even complain if it happens. Did I say 26 kilometers? Well, let's make that a cool 30 kilometer day. Why? Because at 4 p.m. I made a run under the rain, of course, to uh, the nearest restaurant. And just my luck, when I got there, I realized that it's closed. It closes from July 31st until August 15th. And we are right in the sweet spot in the middle. So I continue on walking to the center of town, which is a kilometer away from here. And once I got there, all the places that offer food were closed and they don't open until 6 p.m. So I had to make my way back that's two kilometers and then at 6 p.m. still under the rain I grabbed my poncho and my umbrella and I made my way back to the center of town an additional kilometer and of course I had dinner I had a pizza and a beer at the only place I was offering uh, food I'm back here now that's four kilometers and uh, what a day what can I say it's, it rained the temperature is cool for, for a chance cloudy made my way I had a large pizza and a beer made my way back here that's four kilometers or 30 kilometer a day and right now you know just enjoying the cool temperatures it started it stopped raining already but it's still overcast and I think I'm gonna have a great night nice sleep tonight tomorrow's gonna be a hell of a day the longest so far on the trip 32 kilometers in the mountains but we'll deal with that tomorrow. Let's just call it a day. New stage, three days away from Le Puy and Valais. I'm seeing signs all over the place. So I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6 a.m.